Hello viewer and um, welcome to my response video. Uh, yeah, I don't do these things often, but it's just something I felt the need to talk about. Equally, and I do mention it in the video, I've been up like, been working like eight days on the trot without a day off and I've been up a lot and had very little sleep. So kind of not the best quality could have been, but equally it's very valid and I kind of just really wanted to talk about it. And to be creative is to be alive so I have to. Sorry about that, but I do love you all and thanks for watching it. It might be a bit interesting, so we'll see. And I'll see ya. Uh, welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've been working solidly for the last eight days and am knackered, but came back yesterday and saw a video on YouTube by a lovely lady on a channel called Res Please. I will leave a link in the description for her. Responding to PewDiePie's conversations about force, forced positivity, which then made me think, oh, what's this spiral of conversation that we've gone down? And one thing led to another, and it's all about PewDiePie talking about people pretending to be really happy to get more views and how he really hates it. Now, I kind of found it quite interesting and sort of wanted to talk about it. I think what Rez Please was talking about was a bit more valid and a bit more interesting than Pewds, but... um. I'm going to just touch on PewDiePie and his conversation first. I think from his position, it's very valid. You have millions of subscribers. Just be yourself now. What the hell is wrong with you? Equally, you owned up to, mean, to doing that yourself at the start because you wanted people to come and see you. And you say you hate it now. So in a way, you kind of hate your old content. But that's OK, because we all do, I guess. Don't worry, PewDiePie. It's fine. It's just kind of a bit funny though, because this is a social medium, people are social upon it, but equally you have to present a certain front about yourself at all times. When I go to work, I go to work in a certain manner. I put my work hat on and that's the hat I take. When I come home and put my gym jams on and lay on the couch and eat frozen grapes like some kind of lord, I'm not putting on a front, I'm just laying around eating frozen grapes, but I'm not going to show you that because that looks stupid. Equally, if I've had a really bad day and feel really rubbish, I'll probably not do a thing or pretend to do a thing because I can't fake that sort of stuff or force that sort of stuff. But if you're someone who can, and again, if you're someone with 20,000 subscribers and you feel you need to do those things, Fair play? Who's PewDiePie to say that that's wrong or unfair or unjust? And I think it's kind of frustrating that from his position he can do that. Because he's kind of a social touchstone. So what he does is he says it's really fake and false and dishonest. And then millions of viewers will watch thousands of Let's Players thinking they're being fake and dishonest. He's not going to get any ramifications for that. But it's quite potential other people will. It's, it's kind of PewDiePie sets a mindset that then audience members will follow. And... It's kind of a way the big guy can just destroy the little guy and no one seems to notice and I think that's a bit unfair and a bit silly. So, bad, bad PewDiePie, don't do that again. And equally with PewDiePie, he talks about positive and negativity, like it's a choice and things, but it's just, it's just a fact of life, it's just how it is. And equally he talks about how people being falsely positive on YouTube will then impact people viewing them to make them think they have to be falsely positive in life as well. But YouTube is a microcosm of life, it's not actually a life. Like, if the only kind of influences I got from how to be as a human being came from watching videos on YouTube, that would be my bigger worry, not the fact that I then decided to take all those views from people who are being incredibly positive and bouncy. Um, I did check out Philip DeFranco's conversation about it as well, and the bit that really stuck with me is he, he said the, the only thing that really help, hurts people who are being falsely positive, the only thing, the only one they hurt is themselves because they're putting on a front and they are applying the pressure to maintain that continually. And I think that's quite true. It doesn't hurt to see someone always smile on camera every day, but it hurts that person because that's not how you become a well-rounded and human individual. What I think is a bit frustrating about this entire topic of some conversation, however, is the fact that both of them and all of the big ones at the end is like, I'm not talking about depression. I'm just talking about people who sometimes feel happy or sad, but it's like, the bit that matters is depression. Everyone has emotions and feels good and bad, but it don't, they don't impact our lives. We're watching TV. This is a cartoon. This is a show. This is, this is nothing like real life. But people who suffer from depression and people who have suffered from depression and that conversation about forced positivity 
it touches that line without actually being relevant or helpful to anyone who might be going out of the way to try and find some help and support. And that's what's really sad about it. It's like PewDiePie isn't trying to reach out and say, guys, this is this is a positive thing. Let's try and help. It's just kind of very negative and very closed off. And the people that really don't need that are people who have suffered or are suffering from depression. And it doesn't even cover it. It doesn't even want to touch that big, big issue. It's the rest of it. It's 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 people who are fine sometimes and sad other times. Don't be so vapid and vague and vacant. <laughs> Have some meaning. That's just not good enough. And I will say with anyone who has struggled with depression or is struggling with depression, the only advice I can give you is don't be alone, even though you want to be alone. Just be with people, sit with people, watch crappy movies with people. And don't try and force a time frame for your guilt or your grief or your pain don't be like well it happened two weeks ago or three months ago or five years ago you will adapt and grow as you adapt and grow and recognize that even as you overcome these hurdles you won't be who you were but that's okay too just don't be alone be in the moment and appreciate what you can in that moment but don't put pressure on yourself to achieve milestones in emotional outcomes okay so for people with that good luck <laughs> PewDiePie, just dude, get a grip a little bit. Okay, come on. You did it. You, shut up. And Res, please, thank you for showing me this because I did just find I want to talk about it a little bit. So, cheers. Sorry, guys, this is a complete weird thing, but I've been at work for eight days and I kind of want to talk, so let me do a thing. You're not my dad, all right? Just, just, just let me do a thing. Stop it. God. Bye. <laughs>